Trinity Western University has some policies other universities would not only not have, they wouldn't consider, be that as it may. Um, sometimes we could all learn to let along, you know, let people alone, get along, that sort of thing. But there are lawyers and law societies in Canada that just can't do that. Marissa Semke was here. First of all, let's get on the table here what the policy is at Trinity Western. They have a policy they expect their students to adhere to. Yes, so uh, all students entering the university are, are required to, to sign a covenant, and it's basically in accordance with biblical standards of morality. So no sex, no premarital sex. It's uh, also stated that you can't get drunk, do drugs, swearing, I think, is part of it. And those are all in accordance with biblical standards with the Bible. So it's not on the party university circuit. No, hey, well, precisely. This is no. actually, I think, the only evangelical institution in Canada. And let's keep in mind, this is a private institution to be distinguished from all of the various other public institutions. And no gay sex, which is what's ticking some of these people and off. And that's really the crux of this issue here, yeah. is the uh, premarital sex and specifically no uh, gay sex. And so uh, you've got law societies in Ontario and Nova Scotia that have decided to essentially ban graduates from this law school, which by the way doesn't open until 2016, from being accredited to practice law in these two particular provinces. Now I have to say, this particular issue was uh, when to the Supreme Court back in 2001, uh, actually having to do with the British Columbia College of Teachers. And back then, what the Supreme Court ruled was similarly, these teachers uh, had to from sign this university. covenant from yep. Trinity Western University, had to sign this covenant. And back then, uh, the College of Teachers did not want to accreditate them uh, and allow them to essentially go on and to teach teachers uh, to enter into the public service. What the Supreme Court ruled was that that was unconstitutional. Well, the Supreme Court ruled, as I remember, that there was no indication, especially ahead of time when a person hadn't even started teaching yet, that there was any damage they would cause in the classroom. It would be the same with the lawyers. Well, it is incredible to suggest that someone who hasn't even joined a law school yet would not be fit to be a lawyer in Ontario or Nova Scotia. Well, exactly. And all you have to do is look south of the border, Jerry, to see that there are evangelical institutions that have produced lawyers, and there are plenty of them in the United States, Pepperdine, Liberty that produce these lawyers and they've actually coexisted with some of these secular institutions lawyers too so that hasn't been a problem in the united states also another point worth mentioning is the fact that any of those graduates coming from pepperdine or liberty university these are evangelical institutions their te or their students required to sign very similar covenants all they have to do is cross the border sign the ontario bar and they're allowed to practice so why are the law societies in ontario and in nova scotia discriminating against graduates from trinity Western, but not anywhere in the United States. Well, right. I mean, uh, if the school is teaching law, if, they, if you can prove they're not teaching law effectively, if you can prove that, in fact, they're turning out lawyers who don't understand the law or were th are thwarting the law, when, then you have a different mm -hmm. issue. But as you suggested, it hasn't even actually really gotten started yet. Sure. Uh, I understand one of the things they're going to do at their law school is encourage their students, once they graduate, to do what a lot of young people with a law degree in hand won't do, and that's to go to smaller communities in rural areas and serve those communities that need lawyers, instead of saying, oh, I'm going to go to the big city and party at night. Exactly. Uh, and, and maybe these to be the people who would actually do that. That's a that's a service to the country. It's clear the only people being discriminated against in this situation are the graduates of Trinity Western. In the spirit of uh, 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 d uh, diversity, you know, this is this is this doctrine that liberals really like to cling on to. The only people they're discriminating against are Christians, and that shouldn't be allowed. Well, that's why I said we have bigoted lawyers. Now it was a vote of 28 to 21, so good for the 21 yes. who voted uh, that these graduates should be admitted in. In Ontario but 28 of them uh, basically there is nothing other than an anti-religious bigotry here I think and by the way you don't have to agree with Trinity Western University's policies that's not the issue here nobody has to go there nobody has to study there but freedom of religion does mean something mm -hmm. and uh, apparently not to those 28 Ezra made a good point in an email I saw recently where Ezra Levant said these are 28 lawyers who probably would have been very happy with Pauline Moirot's Charter of Rights <laughs> well said now uh, the one thing that we are looking at now is the Trinity Western is considering all legal options. They are looking at potentially relitigating this issue, which again was already determined back in 2000. Yep. And one, you also have sort of certain lawyers in BC that are being emboldened by this. People like Clayton Ruby, who of course is very uh, infamous to this network and to a lot of our viewers. Uh, he's being one. Of, he's one of those lawyers that's actually considering uh, bringing or challenging uh, Trinity Western. All right. Thanks very much. You're welcome.